Hello everyone. Welcome to my presentation on the PDSA plan, Creating a Healthy Work Environment by Angela D. Herrera. And this will be using the Plan, Do, Study, Act model. PDSA plan, issue identification. Unhealthy work environments are toxic for the workplace and prevent the retentions of nurses in the profession. Ritter 2010 found that unhealthy work environment characteristics were found to be poor communication, abusive behavior, disrespect, resistance to change, lack of the vision, lack of vision or leadership, no trust, conflict with values, mission and vision, and loss of understanding of core business. Hospitals strive to provide excellent care, but face serious challenges in providing high quality care in a rapidly changing and uncertain environment. According to Manchester 2007, an unhealthy work environment can have a physical and physiological effects on nurses through the long hours, difficult relations in the workplace, low professional status, and a variety of workplace hazards, emotional exhaustion, depression, lack of job motivation, and experiencing low job efficiency are typical burnout symptoms that can be felt in unhealthy work environments. Quality variants. Many areas of nursing, especially specialties in the hospital such as ER, ICU, and med surge, have difficulty retaining nurses. Inadequate nurse staffing and issues of uneven quality of care in hospitals are often blamed on growth of managed care and increased hospital competition. Recent evidence shows that unhealthy work environments contribute to medical errors and effective delivery of care, conflict, and stress within healthcare organizations. In contrast, the American Association of Critical American Association of Critical Care Nurses have came up with six standards and belief that work all in belief that all workplaces can be healthy. And the standard involves nurses and employers. The AACN standards involves nurses and employers that addresses the physical environment along with the barriers to staff and patient safety. A new study of more than 43,000 nurses practicing in more than 700 hospitals in five countries indicates that fundamental problems and the design of work are widespread in hospitals in Europe and North America. And that's by Ankin et al. 2001. Stakeholders. Scope of the problem includes these stakeholders, physicians, physicians, nurses, workers within a healthcare organization, other healthcare providers, and patients along with their families. And it can also include a whole hospital organization. Administrators also may be included because the work environment can, ne can negatively affect all workers and consumers. Root cause analysis. Existing evidence of the problem is shown by the Institute of Medicine 2004, where common errors were found in their report, where 90,000 deaths have occurred due to Failure to follow management practices, designated for safety, unsafe staffing and education, and unsafe work and workplace design. Active errors of the issue found in literature of the AACN 2005 include that unhealthy work environments contribute to medical errors and, effect and ineffective delivery of care. Another example of active errors is where poor workplace environments have been shown to increase the odds of patient death and failure to rescue and are related to lower patient satisfaction. Latent errors were uncovered in a study that conducted a survey using 2,000 nurses where work environment issues included long work hours, poor staffing, lack of support from coworkers, lack of administrative advocacy, injustice and unfairness. And another example of latent errors in the literature is that when nurses were asked about their intent to leave, nearly 40% were definitely going to leave their current position or were considering leaving their current position because of horizontal hostility. And this was 
found by Wilson Feltz and Dejure in 2011. Do solution. In 2001, the American Association of Critical Care Nurses established six standards to help create a healthy work environment. These six standards include skilled communication, true collaboration, effective decision making, appropriate staffing, meaningful recognition, and authentic leadership. Burgess and Foley Brenza, 2014, state that the main focus of a healthy work environment project is to involve staff members in the decision-making process and make sure that all have time to participate. Dixon 2008 recommends to introduce the standard slowly to a group, then a committee to allow for familiarization of the standards. Implementing all six standards at once can potentially exceed available resources and energy of staff. Each member on the team of the unit will do an assessment of gap analysis to find which standard is, is the unit strong in and what standard can the unit improve on. Solution implementation. Dixon recommends the gap analysis assessment to be done by each member of the team on the unit to identify which standard there is a, def def which standard there is a definite consensus or variation. Each standard will be evaluated with a survey as to which one to begin with first to ensure that the team is willing to implement a change. The strongest standards on a unit will be implemented. A new standard will be introduced in six months after the first strongest standards are used and implemented. And a timeline will begin in August 2016 where the six standards will be introduced and allow staff on the unit to familiarize themselves with each one. October 2006, gap analysis assessment and the standards will be introduced in a formal staff meeting to allow for questions and education on the standards. January 2007, gap analysis assessment will be collected and the survey will be conducted. Survey collected in March 2007 and the strongest standards will be implemented. Educational meetings will be held to enforce what the, standards, what the standard means to the unit. And this will be the study analysis. A questionnaire will be conducted twice a year for the next five years to measure the effectiveness of each implemented standard. A survey will also be generated twice a year for the next five years to evaluate employee engagement as strengths and weaknesses of the work environment. Results of both will be analyzed to determine if, the, if a healthy work environment is achieved. Act. And the next steps. Um, the effective change will be analyzed continuously over the next five years to evaluate the effectiveness of the AACN6 standards. And the strengths and weaknesses of the work environment will be evaluated from the survey results to see what the facility will need to improve on. Staff members will continuously be encouraged to voice their needs and opinions at staff meetings and with one-on-one -on -one discussion with a rounding of staff to help all stakeholders involved to help understand, to help them better understand and be able to implement into their own practice with each other and consumers. If a healthy work environment isn't felt, the goal will need to be reevaluated and the PDSA cycle can be reconstructed for the new goal. And that concludes my presentation and then these are the references. And thank you for watching.